Psychoacoustics in speaker design. Hmm, that's an interesting subject, and it comes to us today from Florian in Deutschland, in Germany. And Florian writes, Hi Paul, what role does psychoacoustics play in the engineering process of a speaker? Do you consider the varying sensitivities of the human ear for different frequencies in your speaker design? Yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, we certainly take into affect the uh, way that we hear and imaging. Now, we have to remember that in, a, uh, in any kind of hearing situation where we are the listener and where we are trying to build an image, a sound stage, a, a three-dimensional holographic representation of the recorded music, which is what we do. And I, I know a lot of you have heard that and go, ah, I, no, it's true. This is exactly what we do. This upcoming book, The Audiophile's Guide, all I talk about in there, well, not all, but much of what I talk about there is how to build this, this illusion, this three-dimensional holographic illusion of the musicians actually playing in the room or you being transported to the room where they're playing. Take, take your pick. That's psychoacoustic because musicians clearly aren't there. It's clearly just a recording. So how do we do that? Well, some speakers, many speakers, aren't that great at creating that three-dimensional holographic image. And many speakers are. So yeah, when we build speakers, when we design speakers, we take all that into account. I mean, we set it up in a, in a prescribed way that we know works within the room the very same setup procedure that I will walk you through in the Audiophiles Guide and, and the Audiophiles Setup Guide um, recording that goes along with it. We, we, we walk you through step by step how to achieve that three-dimensional sound. And that only works, or how well it works, is really dependent on the electronics, but mostly the speaker. So when we design a speaker, we set it up properly, and then the way we tune the crossover, how we do the baffle, which is the front part of it, the, everything about that speaker is designed so that that speaker can just disappear and create this, this three-dimensional holographic image. Uh, 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 how wide the sweet spot is, right? I mean, that's all psychoacoustics. So when we move over here, um, we want it to sound as holographic as when we're in the middle or over here. How do we do that? We do that by varying the frequency response off axis as opposed to on axis. And we try and get as smooth a response as we can, both on and off axis. And, and on axis means you're pointing at the speaker or the speaker's pointing at you. Off axis is off the axis of the direct shot that we have on there. So yeah, we, we pay attention to all of that stuff because that's a really big deal. And if you're choosing a speaker, you should buy one from a manufacturer that also pays attention to psychoacoustics, to uh, all the things that I just mentioned, and the, and the creation of this holographic soundstage, which is just hard to put into words, but once you hear it, you can never let it go. So I'll tell you more about it as I get close to publishing the book. We're, we're getting, it's, it's fully written. It's at the editor. I'm putting it into InDesign, and we're, we're, we're getting there. I have a lady doing the cover. Uh, it's it's going to be kind of fun. I'm excited to, to show it to you, along with the CD, uh, or the essay CD, that Octave Records is going to produce that goes along with it. There's like 17 tracks, and each track, you know, start here, get this, start there, do that. And if you don't do that, here, open the book, and ah, okay, I'm going to move it and change it. So between those two, you too can have a completely holographic soundstage um, like you probably have never heard and didn't know that you actually had the capability with your equipment. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Thanks for the question. Talk to you later.